Sense of time, turn it back and make it change your mind If I could turn back the hands of time Baby, there ain't no more lies I will promise that for life Baby, look into my eyes Maybe you can compromise You can't miss the castle on approaching the harbour. We couldn't wait to stretch our legs and see the views from up there. Tarbot Castle is located on the southern shore of East Loch Tarbot in Argyll. It was a strategic stronghold during the Middle Ages, dating back pre-14th century. Above the picturesque village of Tarbot, the wooded hills offer panoramic views over the harbour and across Loch Fyne. Whichever trail you choose is scenic, taking you up to the rocky hillside, up over the moors, or a shorter trail with a fairy trail, especially interesting if you have little ones. All paths are well maintained, filled with wild flowers and wild garlic, giving off beautiful fresh scents. So, Port Tarbot, or Tarbot Marina. Tarbot Place. Really pretty place. Kyle? What? Well, in. In <laughs> Tarbot, what do you think? Good. Good? Just come stretch our legs. Yeah. Have a for lovely a walk. walk. It's beautiful. Found a stunning little walk. Here we are, just entering the Kyles of Butte. No, it's not you. You're just Kyle, and you're not mute. I am. Oh. But there's no wind. There's some though. Come to motor. They're in front. have got the red sail out. But look, the wind zero. Thelma, how Scooby? <laughs> <laughs> what the? Stop looking at my kiwis. <laughs> you free. Oh, God. Oh, you that sees the making of the delirious. <laughs> Kyle, don't bruise them. <laughs> don't bruise your boobs. Why have I got airy nipples? Show us. Stop it. No, don't show us. Ah, <laughs> lovely pair of kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just coming up the West Kyle, around that corner where that ferry's going, leads to East Kyle. When we were doing the RYA training course, this is where I finished my part of the navigation and picked up a mooring ball for the first time over there. But we're doing it in reverse this time. Yeah, West Kyle out. Yeah, we went up East Kyle through the West Kyle and we're doing it in reverse this time. And so that is heading towards East Kyle. And Calad Harbour. Calad Harbour, apparently. So pretty. Lots of mountains either side of us. That would be a beautiful place to live. This is Calad Harbour. We really wanted to go into uh, into the harbour, but we wasn't sure on the depth, and our keel is two metres, so we've really got to be careful with depth, so we decided against going in, which is a shame, but a bit of local knowledge, and uh, we would have been okay, I think. Gipper Hannah's got deja vu. Put him in reverse. Put him in reverse. I don't know if you can remember from episode whatever it was. <laughs> She came through this uh, channel 
an hour day skip of course. taking his back through. Ah, it looks wide now, that little boat's going through. Yeah, 25 metres. And this Always kid eating. just does not stop eating. Doesn't stop. Everything. Mm -hmm. Gav taking his dinghy for a walk. Come on. <laughs> There's nowhere to hook it up to. Except <laughs> the first for us. So she's still here when we come back. There she is, and we've just brought a little tender to shore, those stems, along that road, to the hotel. Here's one of the ferries, well, the only ferry goes back and forth, must be every half an hour. Queuing to go on, so, look at Hannah's nice, neat scone. And it's butter, so. not cream, so we don't want to start the cream jam debacle. For our American viewers, this is what a real scone looks like. Jam's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault it fell to pieces. It's not <laughs> He's using a spoon. He's got a spoon to eat his scone. <laughs> The P.S. Waverley is the last going sea passenger paddle steamer. She was launched on the 2nd of October 1946. She has undergone several restorations in her time. <laughs> it's going! It's a good job you clicked on, young man. I ain't going nowhere. You ain't Due to heavy rain and strong winds coming over, we decide to leave Colin Drave and head for the shelter of Largs Marina. Then we can decide on our next plans. So, turns out we're in a bit of a dilemma. Explain. If you're not interested in passage making or navigation, I'd skip to 14 minutes into the video. Otherwise, this bit will be really, really boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, what day is it today? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday today and obviously keeping an eye on the weather. Um and we've got quite we've got twenty four hour sail to get back home, but we've got just under a week left here. But the weather's taking a turn for the worse. I think we've got a little bit of a window um where we can get back. And I'm just working out now the height of the tides and wishing we were on the med. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I had a height of tides um, and the winds and um, it's looking like we're going to have to have an early start, a uh, 4am start, just to give us a bit of a heads up to get round um, a place called Mull of Galloway. Uh, we'll be punching against tide for a little bit and then it should help us, help push us round. Um, we'll get round fairly far, but then the problem is 
Then we get to Whitehaven, we have to go through the sea lock as you know from previous videos. And we'll, you only get an hour, no sorry, four hours either side of high tide. And guess when we get there? <laughs> we'll get there about five, six hours after high tide. Which means then we'll have to wait outside Whitehaven <laughs> for another six hours. So we figured out we're not that lucky, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, the other option is to go back to Bangor in Northern Ireland, but then we'll be there pay marina fees just to sit on the boat till the weekend when the weather's a little bit better. We could stop here. Um, currently in Largs, um, but it's almost forty pound a night. Um, not much to do, and we just don't fancy doing it. So we're gonna have to make a run for it. Um, but then there's nothing to say that the weather will pick up for the weekend, and then we're stuffed because we've got to go back to work yeah. next Monday. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. We, we haven't got time to play Monday. with. So. There's the realities of sailing, um, water nah, planning, yeah. preparation, and then things go out the, <laughs> out the window. <laughs> so, like I say, we've got tides to plan, winds to plan, or against us and for us, uh, and then we've got the getting into his home port of Whitehaven. The other option was to go back over to Bangor first. That's what I've said. But there's not a lot. To do. We'd rather go to Whitehaven, we can go to the Lake District, we can explore the area there, there's a lot more to do. Yeah, so. yeah that's why we chose Whitehaven, it's, uh, it's yeah. really good. But, bring the camera here, show what the problem is. Tommy was zoomed in on me. No, I wasn't. Yeah, we could well, see the strong hairs and everything. Right, so, we are... But right up here, uh, we've got to sail down here. I'll tell you what, let me turn it over. Right, so we are here, da, 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 here, in Largs. So we've got to sail all down here. The Isle of Harren, so we're going to save down, sail all the way down there, and then we'll turn over the page. And this is Isle of Arran that you saw on the last page. So we've got to come down, right past, down towards the Muller Galloway. And if you can see on the charts there, that's where you get the turbulent water from the headlands. So when we're roughly around here, we will have tide against us all the way down to here, and then it'll help us turn and help, well we'll have slack tide here and it'll start pushing us back across towards Whitehaven but then like I say just before we get to um, Whitehaven it turns against us again but we're over too early to get in the port so that's that <laughs> A 4.30, well, 4 o'clock get up, out and organised for our four, just before 5 o'clock and we're out and in the channel. And it's drizzly, it actually looks lighter than what it is on here. We're up, Liam's helped, there's Anna. Liam's helped us get out, untied and everything, and uh, he's gone back to bed. So, the big race now to get around the Mull of Galloway with the tide. So we've done 15 nautical miles of the 120 we've got to do. Not much out here. And then down there just doing a fix where we are. Doing the log we do every hour. And I see where we are on the chart. Just keep tabs of where we are. I know we've got a navy on each but Always good to have it on paper. Well, that's the first, Anna. What? Just had to take sails down, or the head sail down, we've left main up. 
because we're making too much ground up. <laughs> That's what we've never done before. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you, um, I'll put a little clip on or a little uh, explanation of why we've made too much ground up and what we've got to wait for. And then it should all make sense to you. So here it is, look now. With good winds, we'd made really good boat speed. So we had to slow the boat down, down the Dumfries of Galloway coast. Here you can see in this little clip that I've made, showing you the tides, the tidal flow in the main channel was against us, but I knew if I hugged close to land, there was a really mild tide taking us round. We're halfway home, nearly home, or nearly to Whitehaven. We've got a lull of Galloway behind. We've got Hannah asleep there, wrapped up. They're wrapped. Look at them. This is what it's like going up to White David in the dark. There, you might just see a red line. light there, there's a green light, very very faint to the right of that. It's not good visibility, it's not easy to find in the dark. Our plan to get to Whitehaven for high tide worked out a little too well. Approximately four miles out we called the um, lock keeper. He said there was too much water in the harbour and we would have to wait inside the harbour for approximately uh, an hour. So it was bobbing around inside the harbour and it's quite difficult at night when it's dark like this. But I've just put this daytime so you can see quite how narrow and bobbing around in there for over an hour. Um, it wasn't the most pleasant experience but we did it. We managed to keep the boat straight and that's the gates you have to go through at Whitehaven. First of all, we left our home port of Whitehaven and headed over to Bangor in Northern Ireland. What are you doing? <laughs> when in Ireland? Yeah. There's only one thing you can do, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Nice. White ash. <laughs> then from Bangor in Northern Ireland, we headed north and into Campbelltown in Scotland. There's Campbelltown Ferry Terminal. Then the harbour coming in. A bit of a play area. And then a scary little face. <laughs> From Campbelltown, we had a very short sail to Loch Ranza on the Isle of Arran. Sat in the pub and only Ed Sheeran's come in. I can't believe it. <laughs> what are you playing for us, Ed? Mm -hmm. About. Um, <laughs> Met a girl in an Irish bar, whatever it is. Galway girl. Galway girl. Galway girl. Galway girl. Go on then. Strum. We've paid all this money to come and see you. <laughs> After spending two great nights on Loch Ranza, we decided to head north and on to Tarbot. I ain't going on with Liam. No, I don't like this. <laughs> Just order oh, going to punch myself. It's to make you dodge. After spending the night in Tarbert, we decided to go round the Kyles of Butte. First the West Kyle, then the East Kyle, and then down on to Largs. Gav taking his dinghy for a walk. Come on. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Over there. We spent two days in Largs, waiting for uh, the weather to turn in our favour before heading south and back down to Whitehaven. Captain Kyle here. I've just started a new YouTube channel. If you want to, go and check it out. 